All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Um, they're mowing the lawn next door. So if you haven't here a random lawnmower, it's it's not you, it's me. Uh, but besides that, let's get down to it. The battle royale between Mixolydian and Dorian. Uh, when it comes to modes, you know, a lot of people get frightened about modal talk. And with do right, because there is a lot of ways to think about modes. And to be honest, they're not that complicated. It's just the world around us makes it seem complicated. If you haven't seen, excuse me, if you haven't seen my um, modes part one video, it'll be linked below. I, I highly suggest you watch that. It talks about how modes apply to the chord progression of the song. And so um, I'm going to reference that really quickly. And if you don't follow, watch that first. It'll make more sense when you watch this one. Um, we're going to be talking today about what we call a Mixolydian jam, which is very, very common in every type of music, uh, not just the jam bands, the scene that I, I like, but any anything, uh, southern rock, rock, um, even bluegrass, you know, uh, um, it comes down to usually, not comes down to, but uh, you find these mixolydian progressions. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we have mixolydian progression, uh, that's a, um, a progression starting on the five chord. So if I choose a mixolydian, it means that A is the five of a key, and uh, when we look at it, and hopefully I'll put it right up around here, uh, A is the five in the key of D. So to make a mixolydian progression, an A mixolydian progression, we need to use the chords of the D major scale, but we need to start on an A. And you know, a simple way to do that is it, um, the five is the A, and you go to the four. So you get these like five, four progressions. And we're just going to use that as a palette. I actually have a backing track loaded up on a Mixolydian backing track, which we'll use as that palette, which pretty much is, uses those chords. So let's get down to it. Now, the Mixolydian is the um, quote-unquote proper scale to be using for um, a Mixolydian modal progression or chord progression. Uh, you have a chord progression that starts in the 5, and that is uh, your Mixolydian mode. And so we're going to use a Mixolydian scale. So just in case we haven't done that in a while, let's just discuss the Mixolydian. A Mixolydian is just a major scale with a uh, flat 7. And I'm going to use a standard shape that we all kind of learn right here. All right, and we're going to start up on the 5th fret. 5, 7, 4, 5, 7, 4, 5, 7 on the D. Um, 4, 6, 7. 5, 7, 8, and then 5, 7. And um, if Mike, Mike, the Mike flute player is watching, I have A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. Now that G is the flat 7 that we're talking about, which makes this scale mixolydian. An A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. There's my other note, uh, my other G that makes this mixolydian. A and B. So the A major scale would have a G sharp, and the A mixolydian scale just has a G in it. And if you've seen any of my Stitch Method videos before, when you're jamming or you're improvising, you kind of want to hit the note that's special to that mode. So let me just pop this backing track on really quickly. Let's see. There we go. And all I'm going to do is solo in this mixolydian. It's an A mixolydian backing track. And here is an A mixolydian scale. And you can hear how that G, that note that's special to the scale, has a little bit of like steak sauce on it, as I say. And I really like that. Okay, so now, that is the proper scale to use, the A mixolydian scale for the A mixolydian backing track. Let's just discuss a little bit further about an A mixolydian scale. Well, it's a major scale with a flat seven. And I already gave you kind of a hint, which is, well, the flat seven's important because it's different from the major scale. But also, a very important note is the fact that, well, it depends on the fact that it's a major type of scale, which means it has a major third, which would be, in this case, the C sharp. So here we go, A, B, C sharp. That note is what makes this uh, scale major, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and this note. And if you notice, you know, if you play an A major chord, that's your major third, and that's the same note, the C sharp. So now I'm going to play the backing track again, and I'm going to focus a lot on the major third and the flat seven with this scale. So I'm going to emphasize as much as possible that makes this scale special, the major third, because it's a major um, scale, and the flat seven, because it's a mixolydian. Here we go. So you can hear, now 
I'm going to hit that major third one more time. You can hear that that major third, um, it definitely belongs and definitely kind of strikes you as a, a fun, happy tone, which is what the major third is. So now, there's our Mixolydian discussion. If we're playing a, an A Mixolydian progression, or you're going to use an A Mixolydian scale. But that's not what happens all the time. And I want to talk about this phenomenon. There have been plenty of times when I went to go learn how to solo on a song, and I'm like, that's weird, it's a Mixolydian progression, but they ain't using the Mixolydian scale, what's happening here? And then I had to think about it, and I realized what exactly is happening. Now, if any of you have seen my blues primer playlist, or my blues trick number one, two, or three, or four, um, the blues uh, was this type of music that did the, where the lead instrument didn't sit on top of the um, chord progression as nicely, um, where if the, the rhythm section was playing an A chord, uh, the lead player was playing an A minor. And it was the sound of that minor third and the major third that at first people were like, what the heck is that? But then it grew on people because it had this like bite to it. So what happens here is what I'm trying to say is if you have an A mixolydian progression, uh, which is A or, a, well, it's an A chord moving to a G possibly, um, you have this major type of chord progression, but if you throw the minor scale on top of it, you get the blues and rock sound. And that minor scale in particular is known as the Dorian mode. So let's just take a look at the Dorian. Now the Dorian, if you compare it to the Mixolydian, I hope that everyone's head isn't spinning because it actually makes a lot of sense. The Mixolydian is a major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, with a flat seven. And the Dorian is the Mixolydian scale with a flat three. It's the minor version of uh, of, of mixolydian. It's one, two, flat three. There's the difference. The minor third, okay? The minor third makes the Dorian scale minor and it has the four, the five, the six, and the flat seven. So the only notes that are different between a mixolydian and a Dorian scale is that flat three. And that flat three makes a huge difference. There are plenty of times, like I said, where I hear some of my favorite guitar players playing you know, Mixolydian, and all of a sudden I'm like, that ain't Mixolydian, that's Dorian, what's happening? And we'll discuss. But now, I'm going to play that Mixolydian backing track. The whole point is, is that when you have uh, a Mixolydian jam, starting on the 5, you can use the Mixolydian scale, but you can also use the Dorian, because the Dorian has that blues and rock sound when you hit that minor third on top of the, the major chord structure. And for Mike, my flute player, uh, that minor third is a C, from the major third, which is the C sharp. So C sharp is the major third, and C is the minor third, and it looks like this. So here we have a, a B, C, minor third, D, E, F sharp, G. There's the flat seven. A, a B, C, minor third, D, E, F sharp, G, flat seven, and A, B, and you can even do C here. So now here is the, uh, a, the same track, the A mixolydian track, but now with the bite of a Dorian. Let's see what it sounds like. third and the flat seven. What makes this, well actually there's more to it. The minor third uh, is the, you know, is, is what makes it minor. The flat seven uh, is a key component because it's in the Mixolydian and the Dorian, but also uh, this six is very special to the Dorian itself. I don't get too complicated because it's a major six in a minor scale. And again, I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. The whole point is, is that the only difference between Mixolydian and Dorian is that we have a major bass scale with a flat seven, or a, a minor based scale with a flat seven. Uh, again, in the Dorian, we have a major sixth, and if you want to know what that is, you can watch my um, fish video for sand with a Dorian scale, but it's just the normal, it's a normal major scale, minor scale, excuse me, normal minor scale, with a major sixth, and this case will be the F sharp. So in the Dorian, it's very important that you also use that F sharp. So now I'm gonna play this back and track again. I'm gonna shout out I'm going to shout out when I'm using the Mixolydian, and you're going to hear the like 
the sweetness of the major third, and then I'm going to shout out Dorian, and you're going to hear the bite of that um, of, of that minor third. Now I'm going to put on my distortion, and uh, just to make it a little more um, present. And you, I want you to listen to the differences. And in the comments below, I want you to tell me which sound do you like better. And the reason I want you to do that is because if you find yourself in a Mixolydian jam, or if you write a Mixolydian jam, you at any time can switch between Mixolydian and Dorian. So here we go. So if you, I'm going to start off with Mixolydian. So now, it's your call. And I'm gonna leave this going for a little bit, hopefully it doesn't run out of room. But now, you understand that the major has more of a, I'm sorry, the Mixolydian has more of a, uh, um, a major bite, a happy bite to it, a fun bite. The Dorian has this like blues rock sound, a little bit more darker. And now that you know that they're very similar, one it has a major third and one has a minor third, besides all of its special components, you can mix and match. And when you do that, and when you mix and match, and if you were to highlight all the notes at one time, you get this thing that I discussed uh, in another video called the Mixo Dorian scale, which you can now understand, which is the same scales, but they both have a major third and a minor third. But I don't want you to think about it like that. I want you to think about knowing your Dorian versus your Mixolydian, and knowing that when you hit the minor third, you're gonna get that blues rock sound, and when you hit the major third, you're gonna hit, you're gonna get this nice, happy sound. So here is me playing, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to mix and match now. I'm just going to mix and match. Here we go. So there, I was mixing and matching my Mixolydian and my Dorian together. I knew what the major third would sound like versus the minor third because I just did it in, uh, for about, I don't know, 15 minutes in front of you. And the more you practice mixing and matching the scale, the more diverse your playing is going to get, and you're going to give people a happy, ooh, perfect, it's fading right there. Uh, it, it, you're going to give people like a happy sound on the major third, or a blues or a minor bite on the minor third. And you can mix and match as long as you have the ability to conjure the sound you want and locate those notes that are special to the scales. I will stop talking. I hope you enjoyed this little brief battle royale between Mixolydian and Dorian and how to either separate them in your mind or combine them. Leave your comments below as to which one you like the sound of. Um, there are many songs that use one or the other, or both. Many songs, okay? So you have your options. I'll stop talking. Thanks for tuning in. See you again on The Stitch Method. Bye.